welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and do not adjust your watches. Although here in the UK that's exactly what we had to do last night uh, when we lost an hour's sleep as we moved over to British summertime. Um, so for anyone not in our time zone you might be wondering what's going on. It's simply that uh, we've changed uh, we've changed time, we've gone an hour forward and that's why this video is an hour earlier today. Um, so hopefully it will now stay at the same time for the foreseeable future. Um, and now on screen we've got today's puzzle. Now this is called Black Math and it's by Clover. Um, now Clover suggested this one to me ages ago as an approachable puzzle because um, I appealed on our Discord server for puzzles that were perhaps a little bit easier than some of the ones that I've been doing on the channel over the previous few days and weeks um, but I still insisted that I wanted them to be interesting and Clover instantly suggested that we should take a look at this so um, the testers have had a look at it they say it is approachable and it is beautiful so we should be in for a treat although quite what the title is referring to I'm not sure because you don't tend to see a lot of maths in crop key puzzles um, but we'll see we'll see in a moment uh, now, there's a lot of stuff uh, going on on the channel at present. Uh, firstly, this morning uh, we released a bonus video and it is it's proving to be extremely popular. It's by the constructor Jovial in which he talks through how he set his incredible puzzle Syzygy. Uh, it's really, well, it's, it's just a fascinating watch to see one of these great constructors talk about how they, how they, how they make these these great masterpieces we get to do on the channel. I think many people will be struck by just how much effort goes into it. I mean, there's already been a load of comments saying, I thought it probably took hours to set a Sudoku. I didn't realize quite how long it takes to set these um, these incredible ones that we get to do on the channel. So I, I, I definitely commend the video to you. I'll try and remember to put a link uh, on the screen there. <laughs> Wish me luck. Um, now, also, over on Patreon at the moment, Patreon, if you're not aware of it, that's where we publish an awful lot of our bonus content. Um, and um, we, we do that for the people who kindly support the channel. It's two bucks a month, uh, plug, plug. Um, and I released a video yesterday showing how I solved Thomas Snyder's hard classic Sudoku, Gridlocked which is the one that Mark attempted um, a couple of days ago in his video. And yeah, it's, it's, I, I think a lot of you might find that video quite interesting because um, the way I go about solving it, it's just so different to how Mark approached it. Um, and it's, it's weird that two people who are supposedly quite good at Sudoku can have a completely different idea about how to attack the same puzzle. Um, so have a look at that. And also, of course, we're very nearly at the start of April and at the start of April we will be releasing the sequel to Demono's Everything is Roggen puzzle. Uh, so it's exciting times if you're a patron of the channel um, and yeah for that we're most grateful to all of you who do support us there. Now Clover's puzzle let me read you the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply that's good. Uh, cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. Cells separated by a black dot must contain digits in the ratio 1 to 2. Cells separated by a V uh, must sum to 5. Cells separated by an X must sum to 10. And no negative constraints apply. Um, so let me just explain what all that means. So if we find a white dot, see a white dot linking this domino, that means these digits have to be consecutive. So if that's a 3, this square would either have to be a 2 or a 4. So that's how white dots work. Uh, black dots only got two black dots. I wonder if that's why it's called black math. Uh, anyway, that's solving. That's not explaining the rules. Um, so we've got in black dots, uh, digits have to be in the ratio of one to two. So if that's a four, for example, this would then have to be a two or an eight. If that's a three, this would have to be a six, etc. So just make sure the ratio, the ratio between the two cells in the domino is one to two. Now, what else have we got? V's. Oh, yeah, okay, there are a couple of V's in the grid. These two cells have to sum to five because, of course, V is the Roman numeral for the number five. Those two squares, on the other hand, have to sum to 10 because X is the Roman numeral for the number 10. And there are no negative constraints. Now, what that means is that in any domino where there are not any dots of any color, any V's or X's, it's still absolutely fine. These squares could still add up to five. That's fine. There doesn't have to be a V. 
these could add up to 10. It doesn't have to be an X, etc. So that's what that means. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now let's get cracking. How are we going to crack this? We're going to. Uh, we are going to not do anything for a few seconds while I try and figure out what is going on. There is an absolute cluster of white dots. Um, sort of in this area. Uh, that's actually immediately interesting to me. Ard van der Vettering made this interesting for me. Um, Ard, another of the great constructors on the world scene. So what I'm seeing here is triples, basically. I've got like, uh, let's try and color these in because that will look very pretty. If we do those and those, for example, you can see each of these uh, triomino pieces is linked by white dots. Um, now, yeah, I'm actually, I, I think there is something or there may be something going on here because there is a relationship between these sort of cluttered cells here and these cells. And if you've never seen this before, you may be surprised. It's a very simple relationship, but it's it's quite interesting. So the relationship is that these red cells here um, appear in the purple and the green cells over here, along with one complete set of the digits one to nine. So you can test that a little bit for yourself. You can see there are seven cells here and there are 16 cells over here. So it seems like what I'm saying is correct. Uh, and it is correct. And the way to prove it um, is by, what's the simple way of proving this? Let us, I know how to prove this like that. Okay, so how would we define these, uh, these five rows of the grid? we would say that that's five sets of the digits one to nine because each row individually must contain one set of the digits one to nine. So this colored area here, let me make it all the same color so it's a bit clearer what I'm doing. The purple area is equal to five sets of the digits one to nine minus the gray cells, whatever's in the gray cells. Well, how, how about we do the same thing down here? These four columns are four sets of the digits one to nine. So this region down here is equal to four sets of the digits one to nine minus the same gray region. In other words, the, the purples are equal to five sets of the digits one to nine minus that and the reds are equal to four sets of the digits one to nine minus that. So you can see that if we we can express that as an equation in, in, in effect, we can just put this this gray region on both sides of the uh, on both sides of the equation. What we'll end up with is that the purples are equal to the reds um, plus well the purples are equal to the reds plus one set of the digits one to nine. But we can then go a little bit further because we can delete those and delete those from both sides of the equation because obviously these contain one set of the digits one to nine, they contain one set of the digits one to nine. So basically we end up here, which is where we started with. Let's get rid of the greys. And this might matter because yeah, 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 I love this, okay. This is why it's called black math, isn't it? Because this puzzle is about division by three. This puzzle is about division by three. Why do I think it's about division by three? Well, because any consecutive sequence of three cells like this is divisible by three. How do we know that that must be the case? Well, let's imagine this square was X. 
If this was a higher digit, it would be x plus 1. And if this was a lower digit, therefore, it would be x minus 1. So we could sum these three digits, and they would sum to 3x. So we know they're divisible by 3. So that's divisible by 3, that's divisible by 3, that's divisible by 3, that's divisible by 3, and that is divisible by 3. Now 4 is not divisible by 3. So we actually know that these squares here are 1 mod 3, in effect, by which I mean that if we divide all of the cells by 3, we're going to get a remainder of 1. We're going to get an integer, and then we're going to have 1 left over. Now, we're going to know the same thing for this. How do we know we've got the same thing for this? Well, because this is just equal to this, except for one set of the digits 1 to 9. Now we get to learn the secret. One set of the digits 1 to 9 add up to 45. 45 is divisible by 3. So this down here is 1 mod 3. Oh, no, it's not. Oh. Ah, I've done something wrong. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Sorry, I have made a mistake. Uh, what have I done wrong? Uh, uh, oh, dear. I've done something wrong here. Have I missed that? I might have missed off a square. I don't think I did miss off a square there. This is not 1 mod 3. I don't... And sorry, just to um, explain what... A black Kropke dot, I know a black Kropke dot is divisible by 3, the, the two cells in it, because obviously if this is x, this is... Uh, this could... You can always express a black Kropke dot as x and 2x, so it always adds to 3x, um, so it's always divisible by 3. So this is divi those two squares are divisible by 3, those two squares are divisible by 3, those squares are divisible by 3. So the whole thing is divisible by 3 exactly, and this whole thing is not divisible by 3 exactly, but should be. Oh, I feel like, I feel like the world has just fractured a little bit. Something I absolutely thought I understood. I don't seem to understand. What on earth have I done wrong there? I haven't even misremembered Ard's trick because I even... That, that was right, what I said. It must be right. That's five sets of the digits, one to nine. This is four sets of the digits, one to nine. If I remove the same thing from both sides, then this is equal to that plus another set of the digits, one to nine. Oh, Good grief. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I have not gone... Well, I have gone completely crazy. I have been fooled. I have been fooled. <laughs> this is... This is not the same as that. This is not the same as that because these are all in different boxes of the Sudoku. So this does not have to be a run of... Um, it doesn't have to be something like 5, 6, 7... Because it could be 5, 6, 5. And that... That might... Well, it's certainly going to make me feel much better about the world. Because now... Now... If these can't be three consecutive digits, and I need them to be... 
Let's just think about what the options are then. So if that's one, two, three, four, this can be the same digit. And I think it has to be the same digit because if it's different to this, this will be a run of three and it will be divisible by three and, the, and then the world has fractured. And we don't want the world to fracture. So these are the same. And that square is going to be a bit restricted then because these add up to 10. So this is six, seven, eight or nine. This cannot, right, but this is on a black dot. So it can't be seven or nine because you can't put three and a half or four and a half into this square. So this is six or eight. So this is two or four, which means this is two or four, which means this is one or three, which means this is two or six. That one seems to be one, three or five, because it still has to be consecutive with whatever those are. And this square is three or four. And so let's just double check this now. This has to be, yeah, in fact, it's just this triple has to be one mod three, by which I mean when you divide whatever these three digits add up to, by three, you must get a remainder of one. So this, right, so this can never be one, because if this is one and this is double two, when you divide five by three, you get a remainder of two. That does not work. When you go, yeah, if these are double two, you can have a three here, because when you divide seven by three, you do get a remainder of one. You get two remainder one. And if this is four, yeah, so if this is double four, you can't put three here because 11 is two mod three. If this is double four, five, 30, 13 is right. Okay, so 13, these either sum to 13 or seven. Right, got it. Okay, this cannot be, this cannot be two because if it's two, this has to be three. And this square also has to be three because it's on the V. It's these two squares have to add up to five. That is not gonna work. So we have our first digit and it's a four. That's a four, that's a four, that's a five. This is working now in terms of the modulation and the modular arithmetic. This square is a six, that must be a three. To make the crocky dot work, that's a one and that's a two and we have liftoff. Phew, I am so sorry about that. That was, that was horrible. <laughs> that was horrible. But, but I think I've now figured it out. Thank goodness. Um, now, there are now two fours in the greens, which means there have to be three fours altogether in the purples. Um, because we know that this purple segment is equal to exactly what's in the greens plus one set of the digits one to nine. So two fours plus the, th the four that will appear in the set of digits one to nine means three fours. And that I've just seen is completely and utterly obvious in this case, because once these fours are here, you can see there's a four in one of those squares and a four in one of these squares by the power of Sudoku. You don't need to do anything clever to realize that. Oops. Um, ah, there's a one, two domino though here. That's big because that means you've got to put one, two in there. And therefore you've got to put a one, two, three triple in here because every cell in these six cells is on a dot. So it has to be consecutive. So once the one is in there, we know there must be a one, two, three triple, which means which means that as there is also a four in there, that four must be on a four, five, six triple. So now we know those squares are seven, eight, and nine. These two squares are a three, six pair, which is rather lovely. Um, yeah, the other thing we know is that the four can't go in the middle of a set of three Kropke dots because the four it's a four, five, six triple. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. One way of thinking about that is that the middle digit of each of these triples, we've got a one, two, three triple, so the two is the middle digit, and a four, five, six triple, where the five is the middle digit. So those two squares are a two, five pair.
And the four, wherever the four goes, the six must be opposite it. So if this is four, that's a six. And if that's four, that's a six. So the six is in one of those places. Um, okay. Now what do we do? Little box maybe we've got. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Where do one and two go in the middle box? The answer isn't they cannot go in those three squares because those three squares would form a one, two, three triple and the three is over here. So this is the only place the one and the two can go. This must be a seven, eight, nine triple. The middle digit is an eight. Let's put the eight in, put the seven, nine pair in. These squares are a seven, eight, nine triple just to complete this row. Ah, so we've got the same thing going on here that we had going on there. We've got we've got a one, two, three triple and a four, five, six triple. So again, the four can't be the central digit of its triple. And those two squares must be a two, five pair again, exactly the same logic as in box two. So exactly the same logic as box two. The four must accompany a six on the other side of its triple. So there's a six in one of those two squares. And that six is pointing at the th a three, six pair, which gives us a six here. That gives us a six and a three. Now the three is giving us a three, four pair in this box. And we've got a one, six pair here. So we can get rid of the corner pencil marks, I think. One now has to live in one of those squares. So this is either one, two, three, or six, five, four. Um, now, what do I do next? Uh, <laughs> let me think. Can we work this out somehow? One, two, three, or four. Very. If that was a two, you'd have a one, two, three, four quadruple in row three. Oh, no, hang on, better than that. What would happen if this square was a three? Or if this square was a three? If one of those two squares is a three, the puzzle is broken. Because if this is a three, these two squares have got to be a two and a one because this because of this will be a three, two, one triple. And this two one will give that problem that square there a big problem. If this is three, this has to be a two and a one, and that square has a problem. So the three is in one of those two cells. Uh, so the one must be on the other side. So the one must be in one of those two squares, I think. So hang on, am I getting anywhere here or am I just going up blind alleys? ones I've now pen yeah this is interesting actually I haven't done this using corner pencil marks but what I've amount what I've ended up with is central pencil marks isn't it in this box I haven't placed one three four and six into those squares but I have pencil marked each of them into exactly two positions Oh, this is beautiful. It gives me this. I see what this does. Yeah, so look, this is a one or a four now because that's the only cells that can possibly go into this square. This is a three or a four. This is a three or a six. And this is a one or a six. And the really important one of this is this one because this prevents this from being a one, four pair. That's a two, three pair. The two, three pair sees that square and forces that to be a five. And now this square can't be a one. So that must be the configuration. And that means this is the configuration the other way round. This fixes the one, two in box five. Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. It really is beautiful construction. 
Um, now, okay, so now I must be able to do maybe something over here. Three, ooh, three is on the white, yes, three is on the crop key dot, and two is not possible here. And these two squares are consecutive, so they are a three, four pair, and that's fixable using the power of Sudoku. Four is locked into the domino at the bottom of column nine. Three is one of those squares. What about this one? Can this be a three? This would have to be a two. In fact, it would have to go three. Ah, no, this can't be a three because that would have to go two because it can't go four here. So it would have to go three, two, one, and the one would clash. That's not three. Three is down here. Um, this can't be two anymore because if this was two, the three is gone. So this would have to go two, one, zero. That won't work. Oh, in fact, look, this is four and three. So this is two. Sorry, that was much simpler than I was making it. Um, two, four. Oh, okay. I'm not actually seeing how to do this. I thought maybe the position of the one in this box would be interesting, but I'm not sure. Well, well one has to be in one of two places, actually, because it can't go on the dots. Because obviously if it did, you need the two to accompany it. Um, oh. Bobbins, right, I see how to do this. This can't be one, because if this is one, that's a two and that's a three. Look, you've got to go one, two, three. That breaks that square. So it's similar logic to this one, actually. And for what that did to... Well, no, actually, it's more what, what happened down there. Well, you know what I mean. It's basically, it's the, the power of the Kropke dots to force consecutive sequences that give problems basically it's the same here this can't be one two and three so it must be six five and four which means that must be three two and one the three gives the three and the two two must be in one of those squares and the two be here three no this would have if this is two you'd have to go two three four because you can't go one zero and the four, two, three would clash. So the two goes here. Two goes in one of those squares. One. Ah, yeah. One in box one is locked into a domino here. Therefore, it goes there. Look. Um. One can't go here because that would need a two there, which can't happen. So one, one is in one of three places, I think. I don't really want to pencil mark one of three positions. So let's try and find something better. Um, one here. Yeah, where does one go in box seven? One cannot go on the crop key dots because the two will be needed if it does and the two is not there. So the one is forced to be here, which gives us, oopsie, <laughs> it doesn't give us that one. That's not right. It gives us the one there. So now one is locked into one of those squares. We've got a weird one, two, three, four quadruple here. Similar to whatever we had, where was it? Was it up here? These squares, I've got these by corner pencil marking, but they're, they're the only places in the box that the digits one, two, three, four, and go, can go. So the rest of these squares must be five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's not six. You can never put nine or five in the middle of those strings because you'll have a problem on one side. Uh, Okay, sorry, I'm getting a bit stuck here. Um, oh, 
what is it that we need to figure out? We can, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, fours. Four here. Ah, yeah, four is interesting. Let's look at four in box one. It's in one of those two squares. Now, if four was on the Kropke dot, this can't be three. So this would have to be five, this would be six, and the six would clash. So that's not four, the four goes here, which places a four, obviously, in one of those two cells. Two, three. So these squares are now five, six, seven, eight, and nine as well. Again, you can't put five or nine in the middle of the Kropke sequence. That can't be a five, look. Oh, five. Yes, five. Where does five go in the box? I don't know exactly where it goes, but I do know it's on the Kropke dots from these two fives. So this, given you can't put four on the Kropke dots, these Kropke dots now are known to be five, six, and seven, which means those two squares become an eight, nine pair. Six is in the middle of the run of Kropke dots. We can fill that in. And we can come to a grinding halt again. But, ah, no, hang on, six now is on these Kropke dots. So, does that matter? The answer is, I don't know. Um, it, it feels like it nearly matters. Five, six, seven... Uh, sorry, six I've just noticed is on the... Ah, six, six in box three is placed by Sudoku of all things. So these squares now have to be a five, seven pair. Which is the same as that six is surrounded by a five, seven pair. This can't be seven anymore because it sees five and seven in its row. This is an eight or a nine. This is This square is an eight or a nine. Ah! So that means eight, nine pairs there, which means that square is seven. This square is a five. This is a seven. This is a five. This is a seven. That's not seven anymore. So I can see I've got some stuff going on in column one. And I've got five here. So that's not five or six, actually. This isn't seven. Um, okay, I'm not sure actually that is the best way to look at this. This is seven, eight, nine. Do we know? Yes, we do know six is on the Kropke dot, so this can't be a nine because obviously, however, we do that, we can't get to nine with six, seven, and eight, for example, in three Kropke dots. Um, So if this was six, this would have to be, yeah, this can't be six anymore. If this is six, this would have to be seven because it can't be five. And this would have to be five, which it can't be. In fact, maybe I should just fill these in. These are three, four, and five, aren't they? So that makes it very clear that this, is, this must be a six, seven, eight, triple. This must be nine. That's not nine. If this is a six, seven, eight triple, the seven is in the middle of it, so we must go seven, eight, six. Eight, seven here. Oops. Nine, six there. This is our last crop key dot, so this is where we've got to crack the puzzle, I think. Um, how do we do that? Eight. These have to have the same parity. These two. Um, yeah, this well, this can't be five. 
because if this is 5, this has to be 7 or 3, and it can't be either of those. So this is a relatively high digit, and therefore this cannot be... Oh no, 7, 8, 9 would work. Bobbins. Um, so if this... Ah, 8 doesn't work here. If this is 8, this has to be 6, which it can't be. So this is 7. This is therefore 5 or 9. And this has got to be even, which is 6 or 8. That's not 7. So, oh, there, there you go. Right. So if this is 7 and this goes upwards, this would be 8, 9. And this square would have a lot of difficulty being anything valid. There would be no options for it. So this does not go up to 8. It goes down to 6. 5, 6. This is 9. This is 8. That's 8. That's 9. That's 8. That's 9. That's 8. That's 9. That's 8. That's 7. That's 9. Lovely. Um, these two squares now have got to be, yeah, 5 and 8. I can do that. This square's not a 4 anymore. Or a 5, that's a 3. So those two squares are a... Oh, they're a 7-9 pair, which is the same as those. I need some way of disambiguating those. Um, and it should just be Sudoku from here on out, I think. So there must be something we can do here. What do we need to put into here? We need an 8. We can place that. Uh, we also need 3, 5 and 6. The 3 must go here. Ah, this 3 is going to be important, isn't it? The 6 goes here and the 5 goes here. So this 3 is disambiguating all of this. 3, 2, 4, 1. 4, 5. 1 here. That's now a 7. That 7 is very important because it does all of that stuff over on this side. And we still need 2 and 9 here, which we can do like that. And we clicked it, and that's how to do a beautiful and highly misleading puzzle by Clover that totally and utterly baffled me at the start. I am very sorry for that. I'm... I'm not... I'm not sure what... what yeah, I'm not sure whether I was meant to do it this way at all. There may well be other ways of doing this puzzle that are nothing to do with um, Modular 3 Mathematics. Um, but, yeah, but if I hadn't got hoodwinked, it would have been a very beautiful start very quickly because I could have quickly worked out that this domino here has to be made to be 1 mod 3, i.e. these three squares, when you sum them, have to be... Um, when you divide by 3, you should get a remainder of 1. And that would have been a very quick start to the puzzle. As it was, it was a terrifying start that completely, <laughs> completely did for me. So I'm sorry about that, but um, these things happen when you're solving live. I can't... Uh, <laughs> I can't hide my uh, stupidity, but I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit of a ricket, and um, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>